Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about some new technology. We're going to talk about uh, computer-assisted and robot-assisted knee replacement and hip replacement surgery. Right. So, uh, this is a really exciting field um, because it is introducing technology into the operating room with the hope that it makes the outcomes of the surgery better. Okay? Right. Um, so, computer-assisted surgery, it's also known as navigation, computer navigation. Okay? And you and I have been doing that for... 10 years now with our knee replacements. Yep. Okay. Uh, originally, the first time I saw it would have been in the, I think, late 90s, early yes. 2000s. Commercially, it came in through neurosurgery. The neurosurgeons yep. started using navigation. Um, I saw some of the early development in Kingston here in Canada where they're using navigation for hip fractures. Yeah. But really, commercially available stuff we've been doing, I think, over 10 years. Yeah, 2007 we started. I've also helped design uh, systems that are used for hip replacement surgery. But it's not something that you or I generally use for hip replacements. Probably the most common thing we do is a computer-assisted knee replacement or a computer-assisted high tibial osteotomy. And we've got some videos on those too. And I think the reason that more people use it for the knee than the hip is because we haven't figured out the knee as well yeah. as hip surgery. Um, it's a little more complicated, so you're trying to make a leg straight that previously was crooked, um, and it's just a little fussier than a hip. The and joint's the, a little more complicated. And the outcomes of knee replacement are not as good as the outcomes of hip replacement. So anything we can do to try and make those outcomes better, we will embrace. So it's kind of like those robot vacuum cleaners. Just like it. So the robot-assisted surgery is a, we basically take a robot vacuum <laughs> and soup it up, put it in the OR. No, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. So let's start with computer-assisted surgery. What okay? are the principles of computer-assisted so surgery? The principles are you have a computer in the operating room that helps you uh, measure the cuts that you want to make and measure the alignment of the bones that you're working on. Okay. Right, and what I think people need to know is that the implants are exactly the same. So yeah. the cuts are, are done the same way. The, the incision typically is the same. Um, they're put in the same position. It's just the accuracy, essentially, of those right. cuts that changes. Okay, so now for any computer-assisted surgical procedure, generally, um, when I teach residents and medical students about this, there's five main steps. Okay? okay. One, the computer has to be able to see. It has to be able to see in the OR so it can see what you're doing. And when you say see, you mean essentially the operative field needs to talk to a computer that's slightly outside of the yeah. operative field. It's totally different than seeing like a, a self-driving Google car, right? Yep. That, that thing sees, uses light to see, and it can tell what a car is, what a person is, what the lanes are, and it can drive. But driving a car down a road is about a million times easier than replacing a knee. So <sighs> the computer-assisted and the robotic-assisted knee replacements are not to that level yet where it's right. a self-driving car. It's not a self-operating device. Okay? We're still there. Big time, okay? Yeah. So first it's got to see. So it can't, it, right now the technology is such that the computers in the OR and the robots in the OR aren't seeing like light. We have to have some sort of device. So we use infrared trackers most commonly. Yep. These little devices that reflect or emit infrared uh, light and uh, there's a receptor on the computer or robot where it detects these and it can tell where in space these trackers are. Right. Okay. That's step one. Step two is we need to attach them rigidly to the leg that we're operating on. Right. So now that we can, the computer can see, it, we have to attach these things that it can see onto the moving parts, which is either the leg, the tibia, the femur, or an instrument that you're using, if that's being navigated or tracked as well. So that's step two. And we can't just set them on there. They need, we actually put them through a screw that is rigidly fixed because even subtle changes in position of that tracker will drastically alter the outcome and defeat the purpose yeah. of, of the computer. Well, then the computer's getting bad information. Yes. It won't know exactly where the leg is in space or your cutting instrument is in space. Right. Okay. So uh, step three is once we've attached these things rigidly, we have to tell the computer where the important parts of the bone are relative to where we attach these trackers. And that's called registration. Okay, so we put the trackers in and then we tell the computer these are the important landmarks, okay, relative to where we stuck these trackers into the bone. Some, some systems use a CT scan before to register yep. in addition to like manual registration of points. So that's step three, registration, okay. And then step four is the procedure itself. Telling the computer what we want to do. The computer's not going to tell us where to make the cuts. 
we're going to tell the computer where we want to make these cuts. It's like how? Yeah. What are you doing, Dr. Weenie? <laughs> Why are you doing that cut, Dr. Weenie? Yeah, so we decide how much femur you want to remove, what angle you want the cut made at, what your ultimate goal is. You get to decide as the surgeon um, what your goal is, and the computer just helps you accomplish that goal with greater degree of accuracy. Okay, so we're going to tell the computer that, okay? And then step five is do the procedure. You got to make the cut itself, which okay. is really cut. The, when we say the procedure, really we're talking about the cuts because that's what cuts. the computer is doing for us. Okay. So, and now step five is where robot jumps in. So all that, all those steps, one to four, are the same for computer-assisted surgery and robot-assisted surgery. With subtle variations, but yes, yeah. principally. And now step five is we're going to do it or are we going to have a robot help us do it? Right. So in computer-assisted surgery like we do, we're holding the saw, we've pinned, say, a jig using the assistance of a computer, but we're pushing the saw, we're deciding how deep it goes, um, yeah. we're essentially the robot. And now, for the robot assisted, there's some variability with the different systems that are out there, but a robot will either position that cutting guide for us, and then we'll make the cut over the cutting guide that the robot's holding, or we will hold an instrument with the robot yep. and uh, advance the instrument, and the robot will guide our hand as to the plane that we want to cut in instead of a cutting guide, and it'll stop us from cutting into a dangerous area. Let's look at a quick video. Let's look at a video to see what I'm talking about. Okay. So here's a video uh, of, you can see the surgeon, which uh, might be me or my colleague at this point, at this course, holding uh, a cutting guide, a cutting instrument, a burr in this sense, and the robot arm holding it as well. All the movement that is occurring is driven by the surgeon. The robot is not doing any movement here. That's all the surgeon moving the instrument, and the robot is just guiding the plane where it should move. And that robot arm is wrapped in a plastic bag essentially to keep it within the sterile field. Exactly. So, uh, and, and the robot will cut the power to the instrument if it veers off of the safe zone okay. or if it veers out of the plane where it should be cutting. And certainly that's a really big advantage not only for surgeons that don't do very many of these procedures, but also it's an excellent uh, tool for trainees, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so is it better? So I, I think that is, uh, is debatable. Um, I think a lot of people would say, well, hey, if I have a lower risk of a complication or making a cut too deep or too fast, that's obviously a significant benefit. I think for me, uh, intuitively, the real benefit of robot surgery ver or computer assisted surgery is that it makes us more accurate. Yeah. So yeah, I think both have significant advantages um, and the robots is kind of taking it to that next level. And it's just gonna take some time for us to see if there is actually a clinical benefit because sometimes it takes many years of outcome studies to see if there is a benefit. Just now, we're seeing some of the benefits of computer-assisted surgery. 10 years later. Yeah, with a lower revision rate, these implants seem to be lasting longer if you put a computer, if you, if you get a computer to help you implant it. Yeah. Uh, so it might take a while, but time will tell if the outcome is better with a robot assisting. But I just want everyone to understand that the surgeon is still doing the surgery and the robot is assisting. I think the other thing people need to know is that this is not going to get you out of the hospital faster. It's not going to make the incision necessarily smaller. So right. the, the gain is really not short term. It's, it's all for long term gain. Like Paul said, lower revision rates, longer survivorship of the implants, and hopefully lower costs ultimately to, to healthcare systems for sure. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment down below. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time. Hey, 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 before you swipe away, Thank you so much for watching our videos. Yeah, for sure. We know they can drag on, get a little bit long and boring sometimes, but it's all information that we're trying to pass along. And so if you want to watch one of the other videos, swipe it up here. Where? Up here. Okay. Let me do it for you. And remember to subscribe down below. Let me do that for you.